Electric here, and today is Sunday, November 24th, 2024. This is The Current, weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. The Los Angeles Auto Show has kicked off this week with several new EVs on display. We will start with the most anticipated out of the bunch, the third row all-electric Hyundai Ioniq 9 SUV. At the unveiling, the company confirmed that the Ionic 9 would be built on the 800-volt eGMP architecture, shared with the Ionic 5 and 6. They emphasized its support of lower voltage charging without issue. They also claimed it would be capable of charging from 10 to 80 percent in 24 minutes on a 350 kilowatt dispenser. This will be the longest wheelbase for the eGMP yet. It will have a 110.3 kilowatt hour battery with three available motor configurations. The entry level long range rear wheel drive single motor variant will produce up to 214 horsepower and achieve an estimated 335 miles of range. The long range all wheel drive configuration will output up to 308 horsepower, while the performance all wheel drive with two 160 kilowatt motors will produce up to 429 horsepower and hit 0 to 60 miles per hour in 4.9 seconds. Hyundai didn't reveal range estimates for the two all wheel drive configurations, but they claim to hit 300 plus miles in all trims. The North American charging standard port is standard and will be able to utilize Tesla's DC fast charging dispensers version 3 and up. On top of that, the Ionic 9 supports vehicle to load, vehicle to everything, and vehicle to home bidirectional charging capabilities. Its modest front trunk comes in two configurations with a maximum volume of 3.1 cubic feet for rear wheel drive models and 1.8 cubic feet for all wheel drive models. When loading up the cargo space, the vehicle will use self-leveling suspension dampers on the rear to accommodate for the weight. The Ionic 9 targets a 5,000 pound towing capacity and a trailer mode will generate predictive range estimates when towing. More notable features include a digital key, a refined EV route planner presented on a panoramic display, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and the new feature on demand content streaming and marketplace platform. Ionic 9 also includes Hyundai's new AI voice assistant and an auto terrain mode, which uses AI to recognize the road surface and select the optimal driving setting. Inside, there are full reclining front and second row relaxation seats with a massaging feature. A sliding center console accessible to passengers similar to the Ionic 5, active noise control to reduce road noise, 11 standard ADAS safety features, an available head-up display and digital rear view mirror, a fingerprint reader for security, and 360 degree camera view. The Ionic 9 will be built in Georgia at the Hyundai Motor Group Metaplant America alongside the Ionic 5. Scheduled availability begins in the spring of 2025. The company has not provided pricing yet. There has been no shortage of third row electric SUVs lately. It looks like VinFast has even started deliveries of theirs at their LA headquarters this week with a lower price than expected, but we'll get to that in a minute. Other Hyundai Group EVs were showcased at the media preview in Los Angeles for the auto show, including the mid-cycle refresh of the GV70 Electrified and Kia EV6. The notable changes for the Electrified GV70 include a redesigned front fascia, an illuminated NAX port with motorized charge port door, a larger 84 kilowatt hour battery up from 77.4 kilowatt hours, with the expectation for more range, although that figure was not provided. The new models are set to arrive at dealerships during the first half of 2025. The mid-cycle refresh of the Kia EV6 will also get the bigger battery and NAX charging port, which is now positioned on the driver rear side. They will also get a virtual gear shift system in the GT version, which will simulate shifting gears through tactile, visual, and auditory effects similar to the Ionic 5N. Towing capacity will be improved to about 2,700 pounds as well. With the exception of the GT trim level, the new EV6 will be built in Kia's Georgia manufacturing facility. That will help it qualify for the federal tax incentive if that program remains intact when the model goes on sale in the first half of 2025. I covered the new EV6 in much greater detail in a previous episode of The Current. 
I'll be sure to add that link to the video's description below. Just outside the auto show in Los Angeles, the first VinFast VF9 has officially been delivered in the U.S. market. The up to seven passenger VF9 SUV is now available in two trims, the VF9 Eco starting at $69,800 and the VF9 Plus at $73,800 with the initial deliveries focused on the Plus model. The price was originally quoted by the brand to start at $83,000. VinFast has also introduced a promotional lease offer, which starts at $529 per month for 24 months with a down payment of $2,000. This deal includes a $7,500 lease tax incentive, a $3,550 lease cash discount, and $3,500 conquest cash. The VF9 comes equipped with a standard 402 horsepower dual motor all-wheel drive powertrain paired with a 123 kilowatt hour battery pack. The range for the Eco model is estimated at 330 miles. VinFast currently ships from their factory in Vietnam. Their planned North Carolina factory was originally supposed to be productive in 2024. Earlier this summer, VinFast delayed the start of U.S. production until at least 2028. VinFest has had a rough launch since deliveries of the VF8 back in March of 2023. Their ownership has recently infused billions. Their global sales figures are slightly ahead of Rivian, but they've not yet made much of a dent in the U.S. market. Do you think they'll get some traction with VF9? In charging news, ChargePoint has partnered with software company Hubject to deploy plug-and-charge technology into their charging equipment. Hubject, a joint venture of many companies including BMW Group, Mercedes-Benz, Volkswagen Group, Bosch, Siemens, and more, works with automakers and charging partners to standardize plug-and-charge technology across all electric vehicles and dispenser types. They have already implemented their solutions at 1 million charging dispensers across 63 countries. With the integration of plug and charge, EV drivers will be able to plug in to a charge point dispenser and compatible vehicles will automatically begin charging almost immediately. The technology removes the step of interacting with an app or display on the dispenser. The vehicle and the dispenser communicate automatically in the background for optimal rates and billing. Tesla's globally leading supercharger network has delivered a similarly convenient experience for more than a decade. The plug-and-charge integration is expected to roll out progressively over the next few months, with full functionality anticipated by the second quarter of 2025. ChargePoint hardware is behind 56,000 Level 2 and DC fast chargers across the U.S. and over a quarter million globally. Considering the company started in 2005, it's nice to see that they're making progress toward a more seamless EV charging experience. Now, we just need more electric automakers to build their vehicles with this compatibility. A while back, we published a detailed look at the ChargePoint history, business model, and an inside look at their testing facilities. I'll link that in the video's description if you want to check that out. America-based battery swapping firm Ample has announced a $25 million investment from Mitsubishi Corporation. The partnership extends Ample's reach by integrating its battery swapping technology into Mitsubishi, Fuso Truck, and Bus Corporation's electric vehicles, which aims to cater to the last mile delivery sector in Japan. Ample already has a pilot running in Kyoto with Japan's leading energy company, Enios. The country has a goal of banning the sale of new gasoline cars, excluding hybrids, by 2035. Ample has previously partnered with Stellantis in Spain for their free-to-move car-sharing service with Fiat 500Es equipped with swappable batteries, Uber for Bay Area ride-sharing drivers, and now defunct automaker Fisker. We visited Ample's facility in the San Francisco area to use the latest iteration of their EV battery swapping station. I also sat down for an interview with the co-founder to learn more about their North American rollout plan. You can find a link to that clip in the video's description too. Chinese automaker NIO has been successful with battery swapping technology. They claim that most stations are now profitable. So far, their customers have completed more than 58 million swaps at nearly 3,000 locations all over Asia and Europe. What do you think about EV battery swapping?
Speaking of Japan, Honda has unveiled a demonstration production line for their future solid-state batteries, located at Honda's R&D facility in Sakura City, Japan. The new line is a key step towards mass production. They plan to integrate solid-state batteries into EVs by the second half of this decade. The first production run of this pilot line is scheduled to begin in January. The demonstration line sprawls over 295,000 square feet and replicates the mass production process from material mixing to cell assembly. Honda will use it to refine battery specifications and production methods. Solid state battery technology for EVs has been in development for over a decade. Unlike conventional batteries, which use liquid or gel electrolytes, solid-state batteries employ solid electrolytes. These can be either inorganic or polymer-based. Support for higher lithium content and more efficient electrode materials can result in higher energy density by weight and volume, enabling greater range. Solid-state technology also holds the promise of thermal properties for faster charging times and greater sustained output. Honda could make good use of these technological advantages. Their vast portfolio of potential use cases includes cars, two-wheel mobility, aircraft, marine, lawn care, construction, and industrial applications. We've frequently reported about solid-state battery prototypes and B samples. A path to true commercialization could finally be in sight. This week at the Guangzhou Motor Show in China, Lotus's CEO, Qingfeng Fong, disclosed the company's new direction to abandon their EV strategy, which they announced back in 2021. They no longer plan to honor their commitment to go all electric by 2028. They're now focused on what they call super hybrid technology. Mr. Fong said the approach combines a turbocharged combustion engine with ultra-fast charging and a total range of approximately 680 miles. These upcoming Lotus models will use a 900-volt electrical architecture to flash charge the battery when stationary at a rate which they claim is even faster than battery swapping. Lotus is owned by Chinese auto giant Geely. It makes sense that they have decided to take this path alongside platform sharing Geely brands like Volvo, which has also delayed all electric plans. This development might shed light on the motives behind the Geely and Renault joint venture called Horse, which was established in July of 2023 for internal combustion engine development. Also, EU tariffs against Chinese EVs apply to pure battery electric vehicles, excluding plug-in hybrids. The EV tariffs can reach up to 45% and, as of right now, are set for five years, expiring at the end of October of 2029. Lotus revealed their Q3 earnings on Thursday, reporting 7,617 vehicles sold since January. That represents a global increase of 135% year over year. Of those 7,617 vehicles, 3,983 were EVs, including the Electra SUV and Amaya GT sedan. 3,634 were the internal combustion engine Amira. 35% were delivered to Europe, 25% to China, and 22% to the U.S. market. Do you think policy is driving Chinese automakers to back away from EVs to focus on series plug-in hybrids? These plug-in hybrids are being marketed as extended range electric vehicles, or e-revs. Do you think this trend is a step forward or backward? Well, that wraps up today's episode. For those of you looking for a little bit more, we published a detailed look at the grounded RV fully electric 24-foot camper van. You'll find the thumbnail in the end screen of this video. If you want to support The Current, please consider sharing a link to this episode online. If you haven't already, I'd like to invite you to join me on other social media platforms, including X, LinkedIn, and Instagram for up-to-the-minute insights and exclusive coverage. Thank you for watching, and until next week, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.